Hey everybody, we just finished our head-to-head -head testing on battery powered stations. A 3000 watt portable power supply is a reliable worker home backup power source during a power disruption or outage. These generators can produce enough power to run appliances such as refrigerators, freezers, lights, computers, phones, and yes, tools. Battery powered power stations are viable short term alternatives to gas generators and they deliver clean, quiet, portable power that you can use indoors. It's safe to use indoors. In this particular head-to-head, -head, we looked at five portable power stations. There's a ton out there, I get it. Four of them uh, run off cordless power tools and batter power tool batteries, and the fifth has an internal built-in battery. We recognize that there are dozens of internal battery power stations available on the market. We chose one unit to compare but we direct our focus mostly on power supplies that geared towards power tool users and outdoor power equipment. Because that's what you folks, most of you folks that subscribe, use. So um, in our evaluation, we looked at the Champion Solar Generator, Generator Power Station, the DeWalt Portable Power Station, Ego's Power Nexus, and Milwaukee's Carry-On Power Supply. And lastly, we looked at the Ryobi 40 Volt Power Station. Now, if you'd like to know the particular specs and watts and all that stuff on these power stations, please go to the Toolbox Buzz website. And the website always has just more information, more details. It's right there on the, on the front page. And guys, while you're at it, please consider subscribing. We appreciate your support. Just take a quick minute, click that subscribe button. Okay, we looked at seven scoring criteria and we designed two performance tests to draw power from these power stations as well. Additional scoring categories included uh, qualitative evaluations such like ergonomics, features, size, and pricing. And of course, we always include best value. Now, the, evalu uh, the evaluation criteria we used for the performance test, there was a peak power test, and we evaluated uh, ripping an eight foot long, two by six pressure treated lumber. We used a 15 amp, 120 volt corded delta 10 inch table saw and we used a consistent feed rate. The second performance test was pretty much runtime. We used a 1500 watt, uh, 1500 watt, 15 amp space heater for power consumption. Ergonomics and features, many of these power stations are feature rich. So we identified, evaluated, and we ranked 13 distinct categories for each power station. Size and weight, size matters guys, and weight gets cumbersome. So we measured the dimensions and weight of each power uh, station with the batteries that we tested it with. Now, given that there are uh, these are not hand tools, weight was not scored in final rankings. Uh, lastly, we looked, uh, not lastly, but we looked at best value. Um, this tends to resonate with you guys because it, it's a unit that has good performance and price. We looked at price. Price is always an important factor in determining which power station to use. Um, and we've included the current pricing for each power station as tested at the time of this video. We typically do not score pricing in our head-to-head -head testing, uh, but this test is a little bit unique and we determined uh, cost per watt hour value and used it in our final matrix. All right, let's talk about that performance test with uh, I talked about the table saw. The winner of that was DeWalt in Milwaukee. Most of these power stations are designed by tool companies and it's presumed that they can be used on a job site where power is unavailable or indoors where gas fumes might be you know, from a generator might be dangerous. When considering using power tools, these portable power stations, you need to make sure that your unit can handle the surge power of the tool that you're gonna immediately turn on. The surge is often called peak power and it's the maximum power that the power station can sustain for a limited period of time. Peak power differs from continuous power, which refers to the amount of energy that the power supply can continuously supply to run the tool. All power stations have a steady state power output rating as well as a higher rating for peak startup power. Now this test is designed to stress the power station's peak load cap capability. So in our testing, we evaluated these units and we ripped a two by six by eight PT 
And like I said, we used that delta table saw. One operator made the cuts at a consistent two to three second foot feed rate. Now the Champion boasts 3,200 watt startup ratings. However, the power, this particular power station was unable to turn on the table saw without tripping an overload warning and uh, forcing us to reset the power station. And three, two, one, go. Oh. What do you do it, huh? Let me uh, reset the camera and do that again. Hold on. Yeah, we got an overload. Yep, let me see. Does it say overload? It's got a red. Hard to see. I see it. I got it on video. The Ryobi fared a little bit better, capable of powering the saw through a slow feed rate but getting overloaded uh, when I pushed through a high, higher rate. The power station also experienced an overload on one of the startups of the saw as well. Now the Ego had no issues starting up the saw and supplying power through the slower feed rates. A um, little bit on the, on the faster rate. The Nexus, um, I, I guess it, it encountered an overload condition during the higher pushing rate. The DeWalt and Milwaukee performed the best and were able to supply power needed um, to rip the wood, even at aggressive feed rates with no overload conditions. Now we also looked at a runtime test with a heater and the winner of that was Champion. We performed a runtime test with that 1500 watt electric space heater and with an inline meter, uh, amp meter, recorded how long the power stations could provide the heat, the heater. The Champion came in at 49 minutes and the Ego at 45 minutes. DeWalt and Ryobi followed with 30 and 27 minutes respectively. Milwaukee was last with just 25 minutes. All the portable power stations could power the heater at a steady rate right to the very end. There were no gradual drop-offs in power. The results of the runtime test closely correlate to the advertised watt hour, battery capacity power over time, of each unit tested. Now the, the Champion has slightly fewer watt hours than the Ego, but was able to run the power unit longer. The other unexpected result is the Ryobi outperforming Milwaukee, as they both have the same 864 watt hour capacity. Okay, we, we transitioned into ergonomics and features, and the winner of that was Ryobi. Now typically in our head-to-head -head ergonomics and features, they make up two of the final categories um, that are scored to determine final overall winner. We, f we found that the power stations had such a disparity in features that uh, it could be important in your purchasing decision that we decided to not lump them all together in a final scoring for one score. Instead, we looked at each feature significantly and gave more weight to it for a final scoring matrix. So let's discuss these features a little bit. The carrying handles. You don't often think of that, the Champion has two neutral gripped handles located at the top of the unit. And while it's possible to carry this unit with one hand, most of you folks are gonna find it comfortable using a two-handed carry. DeWalt, probably the easiest to carry, uh, two, uh, has two options for carry. One is a, a neutral grip, two-handed carry, uh, and that DeWalt calls it their side handle. And the option two is a one-handed suitcase carry. And it's on the long handle, and you just carry it like a suitcase with the smooth side of the unit against your leg so it doesn't catch, the batteries don't hit. Um, Ego has two neutral grip handles located on top of the unit when carrying these, uh, the unit. Um, two, you know, with two of the batteries will be against your body. We noted, though, that when you do that, the body, when you're moving, the body can dislodge the batteries with the pressure. So we looked closer at this and the batteries, the Ego batteries actually slide into their ports, but they don't lock. There's no locking mechanism to lock the batteries in. So they can just come right out. So because of this, the unit has to stay upright to prevent batteries from dislodging. Now, while it's possible to carry this unit with one hand, again, most users will find uh, carrying the Ego much more comfortable with two hands. Milwaukee has like a complete 360 roll cage built in, handles everywhere, multiple carrying options, Padded shoulder strap, um, which is avail uh, sold as an accessory. Um, we found that this roll cage allows you pretty much to approach this power supply from any angle, pick it up with two hands. Um, and again, you can carry it with one hand, but again, it's a two-handed carry for comfort. Ryobi features a top handle and two side handles as well, similar to DeWalt, 
um, and you can approach and carry this unit from any direction as well and you can carry it in multiple configurations they did a nice job um, and they also uh, you can do the suitcase carry with the Ryobi as well and they also offer a padded shoulder strap that's sold as an accessory to help distribute the weight a little bit better we looked at display screens LED displays and for status indicators the champion unit displays a battery fuel gauge indicator as well as a percentage number for battery life additionally the display shows the status of its ports that are in use now this display does a timeout and does require you to push the button quickly to turn the LED display back on um, we noted that the display has the most information but is a bit confusing and not intuitive so you do need to read the instructions DeWalt doesn't have any dis uh, status display it has a green and red light that you know will tell you hot battery low battery charge hot cold conditions stuff like that um, Ego Ego probably has the best balance of being intuitive to operate and provides an easy to read and understand display and gives useful in some information such as battery status indicators runtime charge time remaining and total output power meter um, Milwaukee very minimal display screen it consists of a very crude 25 percent incremental overall power meter along with a warning indicator for overheat over temperature stuff like that and lastly the uh, Ryobi is easy to read the display offers minimal information it includes battery levels 25 percent increments output load and fuel gauge displays percentage number display stuff like that uh, we found it a bit duplicative it has a session timer clock but could really benefit from a kind of a predictive runtime clock like the ego and champion display that was nice battery life indicator champion ego ryobi all have lcd displays indicating battery levels and load levels ego has a large projected runtime charge time which impressed the team dewalt and milwaukee do not have this feature at all um, battery swapping when operating this is important well first of all the champions an internal battery it has the cap capability of parallel connecting up to um, 10 external batteries or an additional power supply which is super cool for off-grid stuff DeWalt in Milwaukee will not operate if one of their four batteries are removed kind of bummed about that the folks at Milwaukee told us that the decision to do this mostly mostly made to make the unit cost-effective um, both power stations will turn off if a single battery is disconnected like I said or depleted this is important to understand as all batteries are discharged about the same time so if a smaller battery is used among larger capacity batteries the runtime was limited to that smaller battery for this reason both units recommend four identically sized batteries that kind of makes sense now the Ego and Ryobi allow batteries to be swapped in or out without disrupting power However, if the units are in a high load demand operation, removing one of the batteries may force it into an overload condition. So you've got to be aware of that. They will operate on any combination or number of batteries. All right, let's talk a little bit about pure sine wave. Most of the power stations provide pure sine wave power. Pure sine wave inverters prevent overheating and damage to sensitive equipment by providing a more uh, stable voltage and frequency output your neighborhood utility provider generates power using only sine waves the champion ego Ryobi and the Milwaukee provide pure sine wave power but DeWalt does not DeWalt offers what's like a modified sine wave type and is not recommended for delicate electronics certainly would not use my computer with it the champion offers a feature called THD shield feature and that stands for total harmonic distortion THD shield will protect sensitive electronics as the power station's battery levels drop too low and it uh, and a pure sine wave less than 5% THD can't be maintained so the power station will power down this feature can be disabled like for instance if you're going to just use something a more robust device like a, a space heater but it's going to protect your electronics um, the number of AC outlets we thought that was important we scored them based on the higher number of uh, of outlets champion ego Ryobi all have 320 volt 15 amp AC outlets Milwaukee has two DeWalt one number of USB outlets uh, we looked at 
And look, we've become slaves to charging small devices and on the go, you know, our phones and tablets and stuff. USB ports have become the standard for DC charging connections for most personal electronic devices. Having USB ports on the power stations is a must-have feature in our opinion, but not all USB ports are created equally. If you're not familiar, USB-A, which is the oldest rectangular connection, typically delivers 5 watts at 2.1 amps of charging. Uh, these older connections, they're being slowly phased out in favor of the much smaller, ambidextrous USB-C. Many USB-C standards exist, and the latest and greatest is the PD, or power delivery, which is capable of 60 watts fast charging with PD electronics. The Champion was impressive with two USB a 2.1 amp ports, one USB-C PD, which is a 60 watt port, and one USB-C QC, and QC stands for quick charge, 3.0 uh, 30 watt port. The DeWalt does not have any USB ports, which is a huge miss on their part. Ego has four USB ports, but unfortunately they are just USB-A offering very little flexibility. Milwaukee has two USB ports, one is a USB-A and one is a USB-C PD port. Now, uh, Ryobi was the king of USB, boasting four USB-A, which is the 5 volt 2.1 amp, and two USB-C PD, which is the 60 volt um, watt. We looked at additional power outputs. Now, the Champion was unique, and it supplies additional DC power output options, like um, it has a 12 volt DC 10 amp automotive auxiliary power outlet, as well as a 12 volt DC 20 amp APP, which stands for Anison Power Pole Connector which is kind of cool. Uh, we looked at onboard storage and power cords. Can you imagine pulling out your power station in the middle of an emergency or a power outage and the cords missing? The Champion supplies a two-prong C7 non-polarized connected power cord, also known as a figure eight or a shotgun connector. This charging cord is pretty common to replace, but if you, if you don't have it when you need it, it could be tough. There's no onboard storage. DeWalt doesn't come with a cord, but you can use any standard extension cord with a, a universal plug. Ego comes with a proprietary plug and attached inverter. The plug and inverter are both stored on board in a compartment on top of the unit. Now, while we feel that having a proprietary cord and inverter is definitely a drawback, the onboard storage compartment is a plus. You probably won't lose that cord. Ego off also offers solar panel charger block that you can purchase um, and replace with the AC block, which is kind of cool. And that's going to cost, it's an accessory, it costs like 169 bucks to buy it. Milwaukee comes with a 6 foot 14 gauge extension cord and also uh, with the universal plug in, you can use an extension cord, which we liked. If a cord gets lost or misplaced, any standard cord is just going to work, which is great. Additionally, the roll cage at the mid-level on the uh, Milwaukee, where it indents a little bit, it's designed to be a cord wrap, which a lot of folks don't know. You can just wrap the cord right around it, it's great. Uh, lastly, the Ryobi cord is also proprietary and no onboard storage. A replacement cord will cost you about 15 bucks if you lose it, but that doesn't do you any good in an emergency. The team absolutely favored the stations that could be powered by standard uh, extension cords or um, units that had onboard storage. Now, um, Champion's cord, while not proprietary, it just it could be tough to find, like I said, in an emergency. And the Ego and Ryobi's proprietary cords would just be really tough in emergencies. So, all right, let's move on to solar power charging. Solar panels and power stations are kind of an interesting conversation. Having the ability to charge your power station with solar panels, really a nice feature and, and one that many folks with RVs, camps, and maybe off-grid uh, interests and concerns will find valuable. Contractors, on the other hand, probably not interested. And there's a limited real estate on a job site when you consider safety, materials, machine movement, um, just not, not there. The Champion comes with an MC4 connector harness that connects to three solar panels. The folks at Champion told us they currently don't offer any solar panels as an accessory, but they recognize that people might want to go off grid and use their unit. Um, we looked at built-in lights. Two of the power stations include a light on board, which could be useful in dark areas of power stations to identify where it's at. Ryobi has a work light with four settings, high, low, solid uh, red, and solid flashing red, and that's, red's good for night vision. Champion has a work light um, at the front of the unit with a high, low option as well. I wanna talk about external power or daisy chaining with a parallel kit. All 
the tested power stations have a NEMA 515 receptacle, which is the standard three-prong household outlet, and that's designed to deliver 15 amps of continuous power. Common application for inverter generators is to power an RV, but most common RVs use a 30 amp plug. Luckily, several of these power station manufacturers have that covered for you guys. Ryobi sells a parallel connection cord as an accessory. It allows users to connect two inverted generators and get twice the power. The, this parallel kit, it's gonna work with all the Ryobi's inverter generators and doubles your power output for heavier power needs. And that's gas or battery. It comes with a 120 volt RV 30 amp 1RC outlet. Now Champion has a parallel connection capability as well to increase the 30 amp power and you can do that by connecting two power stations together or by connecting another Paralink capable inverter to double the power station's power. And you can add a 120 volt 30 amp RV outlet um, and you can also add a, a 30 amp locking outlet. It also has the capability to stack up to 10 expansion batteries for a total of 18,018 ,018 watt hours which when combined with solar charging, it might really appeal to off-grid applications at your campsite or something. Um, Pass-through power. Pass-through power is the capability of the unit to simultaneously charge the unit's batteries while powering something else to its AC outlets. The, this feature is a common request for those that want to use the unit as a standby emergency generator for important power applications, say maybe with intermittent or unreliable power sources, say maybe a sump pump or refrigeration, backup, freeze protection, something like that. The Champion was the only unit tested that had pass-through power, another indicator of its targeted base users. It's just, they're geared towards residential campers RV. If you read the reviews on many of these other power stations, you'll, you'll learn that many of them intentionally drain their batteries when they're not in use, but they're turned on. So many of these power stations have what's called a drain down due to its Quiescent current, which is a natural drawer of the batteries over time. Quiescent current only applies if the unit is left on in that, say, standby mode. And that happens because of like backkeeping, background housekeeping, and monitoring of these units. And due to that, the lack of pass through power, if you want to leave these units on for a standby function, unfortunately, the batteries will drain down over time and you'll have to recharge them. Um, we looked at mode control, having the ability to remotely check power levels, or even turn a unit on or off. That's a nice feature, and to be able to do it on your phone app. Ryobi can be controlled through the Ryobi Gen Control app. Generator, think generator. The app is a well-polished app that pretty much works with the majority of Ryobi's generator lineup. Now, once the unit is powered on by hand, the app can be used to turn on and off the AC power plugs, as well as remotely shut down the unit. The battery power levels can be checked, as well as the out output watts. Some additional features include controlling the onboard LED light as well as LED uh, display. Now the Ego is the only other unit that has remote connectivity. The Ego can be controlled by the Ego Power Plus app and it can be connected via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Ha uh, having the Wi-Fi connectivity can allow you to monitor the unit from almost anywhere, which is great. We moved on from there to security features. Now, while the power stations all have handles that can allow you to put a cable or a chain through it and secure it to something, um, a stationary object or something like that, all but two of them have something to protect their batteries from being stolen. Now, first, obviously, the Champion has an internal battery. It automatically is protected from theft. Milwaukee is the only unit that built in kind of their design and anti-theft feature for the batteries. These are expensive batteries. It has a rotating handle uh, that slides over the batteries and kind of exposes a small padlock hole. And once the handle is over those batteries and locked, you cannot remove the batteries, which is great. All right, now we're moving on to size and volume. The team felt that the space that these units take up is way more important than their weight. Because the battery, we know the battery's heavy, it has to be. We rank these units based on a calculated volume and list the weights as tested for your reference. We also calculated their cubic feet for scoring purposes. The lightest station was the Ryobi at 28 pounds, followed by the DeWalt at 32 pounds. Champion and Milwaukee were close in weight at 41 and 42 pounds respectively, and the Ego was the heaviest at 58 pounds. It's heavy. 
Um, now moving on to cubic feet, the champion was the smallest, pretty much one cubic foot. Um, Milwaukee was right behind it uh, at 1.4, followed by Ryobi at 1.5 cubic feet. The Ego, again, largest of the bunch at 2.8 cubic feet. We moved on from there to charging speed. Now all of these portable charging stations, portable power stations, except Champion, can double as a cordless battery charger. The Champion uh, will charge its internal battery in 4.5 hours off an AC wall outlet and 4.8 on solar or DC panels. Now when you connect both AC and DC together, you can get that time down to 2.5 hours. And we really like the Champion status screen because it tells you based on real-time monitoring, how much time it takes to charge. DeWalt will take six hours to charge four 12 amp hour batteries. Uh, like its competitors, it has multi-port parallel charging, which means all four batteries charge at the same time, but only at a two amp rate, which is not that fast. Ego takes 12 hours to charge four of its batteries. Um, they're 7.5 amp hour batteries. Milwaukee um, will take four hours to charge their 12 amp hour batteries as well. And it charges the battery simultaneously at a three amp hour rate, a thousand watts, something like that. A little bit faster than that DeWalt. The Milwaukee unit um, has simultaneous charging, but it also evaluates the batteries and will prioritize the battery with the lowest charge. Pick that one first. That's because if the pack, all four packs, if one of those packs gets depleted, the unit will not run. If all the packs are depleted and at the same level of charge, then simultaneous charge will happen. Ryobi charges its batteries sequentially, one at a time, and takes um, three hours to charge one six amp hour battery, 12 to do all four. The charger is 80 watts and it's a two amp uh, charge, so pretty slow. All right, let's talk about uh, the portable power station with the best price, and that was Ryobi. Now we scored the power stations with the batteries that we tested them with and included all of it into that cost. The Ryobi was the least expensive tested um, and it came in at like $1,337. It can be sold as a kit with two six amp hour batteries for $899. Um, additional batteries are like 220 bucks a piece. And then if you really did want to get a bare unit, most people probably would if they have the batteries, you can get the bare unit for 750 bucks. Champion doesn't have external batteries and that just sells at $1,500 complete. Milwaukee is not sold as a kit, um, and the unit cost is $699. Now, the 12 amp, hour, 12 amp hour batteries tested will run you $250 a piece to a total cost of $1695. The Ego was tested with four 7.5 amp hour batteries. Now, this power station comes as a kit. You buy it with two 7.5 batteries for $999, which is nice. It just gets you going. The two additional batteries are $400 a piece. So our as tested price was 17, almost 1800 bucks. DeWalt, like Milwaukee, does not get sold as a kit. So the bare unit cost is 529. The 12 amp hour batteries are 320 bucks a piece. Total cost, 1800 bucks. It's important to remember that to operate the DeWalt in the Milwaukee, you do need all four batteries. The Ego, the Ryobi do not require all the batteries to operate. We also moved on and we looked at price per watt. The winner of that was the Champion. We stated earlier that the runtime tests closely correlated to the total watt hour rating of each power station. To aid in seeing how far your purchasing power is going to, you know, to battery capacity and therefore expected runtime, we calculated the price per watt hour for each station in with the batteries that we tested them with. Now again, the Champion took top honors and this came in at 92 cents per watt hour value. The most interesting result is that the Ego station, which was just slightly higher at $1.07 watt per watt hour, uh, the Ego had a much better bang for the buck result than the other three removable battery platform contenders. The Ryobi finished in third place with $1.55 watt hour value. DeWalt was 188 watt hours and Milwaukee came in at 196 watt hours value. These two costs over double the champion when you consider the battery capacity. Okay, let's talk about who has the best power station. Now, our usual modus operandi is to crown one winner as the best class, best in class winner. With this particular head to head, we quickly learned that portable power stations 
are designed to meet specific and different needs for users. We evaluated and scored four categories for you to consider. Best emergency power station, best job site power station, best overall power station, and of course we always do best value. So the best emergency portable power station winner was Champion. The Champion power, power station pretty much scored 36 points and was it was designed from the ground up to be a portable power station and it clearly shows that. It crushed the other power stations in features, price, and runtime testing categories. The Champion is compact, feature-packed, portable battery solution, ideal for RV, RVing, camping, tailgating, or as an emergency indoor generator or during a power outage. You could also use it off-grid and stack them up. Uh, as, good as, it, as good as it is, it's not suitable for job site use. So that brings us to best job site portable power station. Winner of that was the Milwaukee. It scored 48 points, beating DeWalt at, came in at 56 points. The DeWalt and the Milwaukee were clearly designed to be run on power tools for the job site. They both crushed the table saw performance test. The DeWalt lost places due to its featureless design. It doesn't offer much. Milwaukee has more features than DeWalt, but suffered in runtime due to its relatively lower total watt hour capacity. It was clear to us that Milwaukee's minimalist but robust design, it was just designed and meant to be drop kicked and survive on a job site. Of the two power stations, Milwaukee can run with pure sine wave energy, allowing trades folks like myself to run electronics to view plans on the job site or whatever. And we're doing that more and more these days. The Milwaukee with 412 volt amp hour batteries is going to cost you about 1700 bucks. The same configuration DeWalt 1800. Okay, let's talk about the best all-purpose portable power station. The winner of that was RYOBI. This category is where we choose a winner based on all-around value and usefulness, not just score. RYOBI came in second place overall with 41 points. EGO was just one point behind with 42 points. The RYOBI power station is feature-rich. It won ergonomics and features category combined. The 40 volt platform that it's designed off of is readily expanding. It's an exciting lineup for Ryobi, and the power station is just a great addition to it. Outdoor power equipment. The Ryobi is the um, lightest and reasonably compact. Um, the abundances and, and quality of the USB ports were a team favorite. And lastly, the Ryobi can be paired up. It can be parallel connected with gas or battery generators to double into that 30 amp power, something that, that RV users are going to get their attention on. All right, moving on to one of my favorite categories, best value. The winner of that was Ego. Best value is often a very popular category because it highlights a contestant that performed well at a lower purchase price. But the Ego was the second most expensive unit. So what goes here? Well, let me explain. Well, that may be true. It's, it's cost per watt hour conversion really brings that Ego value into the forefront. The Ego boasted the highest watt hour rating with 1,680 watt hours, almost doubling that of Ryobi in Milwaukee. The kit price of the Ego with two 7.5 amp hour batteries is just $9.99. And that brings its runtime capability just shy of Milwaukee, Ryobi, and DeWalt for a significantly lower cost. The Ego power station tells you how much time it takes to charge. It's on its display, which is an awesome feature. And the team liked it allows for battery swapping while operating um, and offers uh, 2,000 continuous watts as well as 3,000 peak watts. Ego was neck and neck in this testing with Ryobi, finishing just one point behind them with 42 points. Both are feature rich and clearly were designed for non-job site user experiences and really, really nice portable stations. Guys, I want to conclude a little bit. I just want to say that these power stations and their batteries are expensive investments. Some of these units had great features, but likely none of them are going to be able to sway you to a new battery platform if you already have batteries of a certain brand that, that could drastically reduce the purchase price and get you into this portable system. If, you, if you're already not invested in a battery platform, you might want to look closer at standalone internal battery platforms like the Champion. That'll get you right into it, ready to go 
These tests that we do, uh, they take a long time to complete and ultimately they're limited in scope, folks. We're not professionals. We cannot do long-term testing. We, we only do a few tests. We can't do every test you'd want us to do or every application you'd want us to test it for. Um, but look, we get lots of comments about how we get to our final rankings and we purposely share all of the data for you in our charts and on the website that, so you could rank these tools however you want if you're trying to purchase and, and pick. Hopefully this head-to-head -head is useful for you when you're thinking about a compact portable power station. You can pick and choose what we looked at to help you make your decision for purchase. If you have a moment, please check out our other head-to-heads. There's a ton of them. You can find them on the, on the YouTube channel or go to the website and there's a, there's a tab right there for head-to-head -head tests. Uh, guys, please take a moment to subscribe and click that notification bell. We appreciate your support and I'll see you at the next head-to-head -head test.